we have an interesting optimization problem here. So the diagram shows a rectangle placed inside a quarter circle of radius 1, such that its vertices all lie on the perimeter of the quarter circle. One vertex coincides with the center of the whole circle, this bottom left one. Let the perimeter be P. Show that P plus equals, sorry, P equals 3 is impossible. So we know that the full amount is 1 and 1. Don't know anything else we just have to show that p equals 3 is impossible and you could start trying to find the perimeter of the whole semicircle but that doesn't that doesn't really help actually you know you can still have a you could have a shape inside here which has a larger perimeter than the whole quarter circle so you know you can't make an argument on that basis um you can with the area of course the area of the quarter circle has to be bigger than the area of the rectangle but yeah Let's not use the perimeter of the quarter circle. So I'm going to introduce two variables, x and y, for the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle. Because then I see that p is going to equal 2x plus 2y. And I want to try and maximize that. Now there's one other thing. I can use and you should always try and use this when you have these sort of circle questions because I've not actually used the circle yet now I'm going to okay because now I've drawn a line from here to here and that also has a length of one because that's the radius and I can create this little triangle here that is right angled and therefore x squared plus y squared is equal to one so essentially, I'm being asked to maximize P with this condition, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, although, I mean, that's, sorry, that's actually part B. At the moment, we're just being, being asked to show that P equals 3 is impossible. Well, what I did, I'm going to talk a bit about what I did and other methods I can you can do, is I tried to, um, I thought, right, I'm going to try and get a single equation involving x, which can change and p which is kind of this uh i know we're trying to maximize it but it's kind of you know at least then i've just got one thing in terms of the other things so i made y the subject and eliminated it so y is then going to be one minus x squared square rooted and because y is positive i don't need to make it a minus so therefore p is going to equal 2x plus 2 times 1 minus x squared okay i'm not saying that this method is like this is the way you should have done it i'm just talking about the process i went through so if p is equal to three then three minus two x is equal to two one minus x squared and i've created uh, an equation with a root on one side and something else on the other because now i can square it so I get a double bracket here if I square the left hand side and now over here I can square the 2 and I can square the square root which just gets rid of it. Then I get 9 minus 6 12x plus 4x squared equals 4 minus 4x squared. Okay and we've actually turned it into a quadratic and because we are trying to show that there is no solution, if we can show there's no solution to this quadratic, then we're, we're sorted. 8x squared minus 12x plus 5 is equal to 0. There's no common factors. Now, what if you haven't done A-level maths, one way of combating this question is just to try and solve it and show that it can't be solved. If you have, then you can simply look at something called the discriminant. And that is your b squared minus 4ac part of the quadratic formula. So I'm just going to get minus 12 squared, which is 144. And then I'm going to minus 4 times 8 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20, times 8 is 160. So it's going to be 144 minus 160. It's going to be minus 16, which is less than zero. So no solutions. 
and therefore p equals 3 is impossible. Okay, and that is a solid way of doing this question. I'm just going to show you how the answers did it. They basically did it the same way, but they didn't get a square root in there, which is quite good, actually, avoiding that. So, actually, they took they made y the subject over here. See, I normally avoid this sort of thing trying to get a fraction, but we could write that y, instead of making y the subject here and substituting in, because then you get a square root, you can actually make y the subject here and eliminate it. So y is going to be p minus 2x all divided by 2. And then if we substitute that into this equation, it's going to be x squared plus p minus 2x over 2 all squared is equal to 1. And therefore x squared plus, okay, I don't have a load of room, but it's going to be p squared plus 4x squared minus 2. Sorry, of course, I'm doing it without... Um, I'm doing it before I substitute the 3 in, but this is actually working more generally. Minus, um, it's going to be minus 2x times p, so minus 2xp, but four, it's going to be 4, 4px, four um, all over 4, because I square the top, which I've done, and I square the bottom, and that's going to equal 1. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to cram this into this small little space. I could times through by 4. So then I'm going to get 4x squared plus p squared plus 4x squared minus 4px is equal to 4. And therefore 8x squared minus 4px plus p squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Okay, and if you substitute in p equals 3 at this point, then we would get 8x squared minus 12x um, plus 5 is equal to 0, which is exactly what we got here. So I'm just trying to show you an alternative method. It avoids dealing with the square root. It's quite nice. Yes, you, instead you just have to deal with this fraction. It's arguably a little bit easier than dealing with the square root. We get the same answer. And actually, in part B, we're going to use this because we're going to be working more generally. So let's take a look at that now. We've shown that p equals 3 is impossible, and now it says find the largest possible value of p. You must fully justify why the value you find is the largest. So what we can actually do is either do the same thing again, but um, not, not let p equal 3. Instead, rearrange this equation by minusing 2x, but keep instead of having 3, have p and then expand it out. And what we will get is exactly what I just got using it the other way. So I'm not going to do the whole thing again, but you can derive it that way if you want. So um, C above for derivation. Atx squared minus 4px plus p squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, I, you know, I actually, when I did this, I was like, how is this going to help? How can, how can we use the discriminant again to help us find the maximum value of p? We just kind of got to roll with it. We're just interested in, at the moment, when there are solutions. And so if there are, if for solutions of p, oh, sorry, for solutions of x, because there was no solution of x when p is equal to 3, we need the discriminant to be greater or equal to 0. It's going to work along similar lines now. So it's going to be 16p squared minus 4 times 8 times p squared minus 4. That's the constant term. It's going to be greater or equal to 0. We've actually now got an inequality in terms of p squared. So 16p squared 
Oh, do you know what? Before we do anything else, there's a common factor of four. So I'm going to divide this by four, this by four, and then the right-hand side by four, which doesn't affect it. Okay, that's just going to be like life a little bit easier when we don't have a calculator. So 4p squared minus 8p squared, and then it's going to be minus 32 plus 32. This is looking good now. So minus 4p squared is going to be greater or equal to minus 32. Now I'm going to divide through by minus 4, and that actually swaps the sign around. p squared is going to be less than or equal to 8. If you're not familiar with that swapping the sign around, then you know it's a good chance to see it. Um, we could also have done it by just rearranging the formula. So if you add 4p squared to both sides and add 32 to both sides, we would have instead got that 32 is greater or equal to 4p squared and then divide through by four, which doesn't swap the sign around. Okay, it's the same, it's the same thing. And therefore P is gonna be less than or equal to root eight or two root two in simplified third form. Note, we don't have to consider negatives here or anything. This is not a quadratic inequality where you have to consider negatives. So we can just look at positives. Just gonna remind myself of that P is greater or equal to zero. And therefore, the max value of p, if it has to be less than or equal to 2 root 2, is 2 root 2. Now, technically, we've not quite, we've not looked at the value of x for which this exists, because we didn't say at the start, I actually missed this bit out, but x and y have to be less than 1. So I've not actually had that restriction anywhere but x is going to be greater than 0, but less than 1, and so is y. Okay, so I just need to check that my, my perimeter actually corresponds with a with our value of x. That's okay. That's really important. Check that this is possible. So I can now substitute it back into my original quadratic. It's going to be 8x squared minus 4 times p. p is 2 root 2, so 8 root 2 times x. And then plus p squared, well, that's going to be 8. 8 minus 4 is just plus 4. And now we can use the quadratic formula. So eight, x is going to be uh, minus b plus or minus. Now, actually, the thing that we've looked at, we got that the discriminant was uh, when it was greater or equal to zero. And we've, we've got the value for p for which the discriminant is going to equal zero. Um, because, yeah, we, because we set that equal to that, if you follow back through, then you actually get zero. So it's just going to be zero, square root of zero here. If you don't, you know, if you're not quite convinced by that, then substitute it in, and you'll see. Substitute it back in for p. Uh, sorry, sub, sorry, substitute in um, b squared minus four ac, and then I'm dividing by sixteen. So I'm going to get root two over two, or equivalently one over root two, and this is okay. Let's just look at the value for y. Remember, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So a half plus y squared is equal to 1. y squared is a half. y is also going to be 1 over root 2. And I can ignore negatives, like I said, because x and y are both positive. Therefore, the maximum. perimeter is, wait, I forgot what it was, what was it, 2 root 2, 
and occurs. X is equal to Y, so it occurs when the rectangle is a square. With sides 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. That's really important that at no point up to now did you assume that a square was going to be the best possible answer. You might intuitively have felt it because often it is the, you know, the thing that kind of uh, that works out because like and you can kind of argue it by symmetry like but you know you don't know there might be a tri a rectangle here that worked for a value of x and y and you've swapped them around one over here that worked okay you must it, like if we had one here there must be one here because of the symmetry but that doesn't guarantee that it, actually it's going to be the square so we've now proven it beyond any doubt that it is So good job. Before I move on to part C, I'm just going to talk about other ways that you could have solved this problem and actually go through one way. So I'm going to skip to the answers. It talks about the fact that it might look like a geometry question, but actually it's an algebra question. It talks about doing the substitution. Um, yeah. And then another method for doing it that I think quite a few students looked at was to use differentiation to maximize the perimeter, either by um, working in terms of the angle or in terms of x. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the angle one, but I am going to go through how you would differentiate. Some people drew graphs, which is quite interesting. I didn't think to do it like that. Um, some use a symmetry argument, like I personally haven't gone through all these myself. so. You, know, you might want to investigate that or think about it or talk talk to other people about that. Um, yeah, there's actually lots of methods. I think the question intended to do it the way I've shown, but there are lots of methods. At least one question, at least one student used the arithmetic mean quadratic mean inequality very successfully. That is worth looking into because it can be really useful in these sorts of problems. Um, and then yeah, that's it for B. So I'm I'm going to talk now about the alternate method two. So this assumes that you've either done some reading on calculus or you've, you know, you, you're doing A level at the moment. So we could write the function back again as P is equal to 2x plus 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared. I derived that by before. And when you differentiate, you then set it up like this. Now, actually... You only learn to differentiate functions like this in second year of A level, unless you, again, like I said, unless you've done some reading around yourself. So it's going to require that for this method. Okay. And if you haven't done this topic before, it probably isn't going to make sense, but it might inspire you to, to learn a bit about it. But we've got a function of P against X. And um, I don't actually know what it looks like. I don't know. I'm just going to make it up and say that it looks like this. I don't know. And we want to find the maximum possible value of p. So this is p against x. Now the gradient is positive, but it is kind of getting smaller. And then it is temporarily zero, and then it becomes negative. So we can find the derivative, which is the instantaneous gradient. And I'm not going to go through details on this, but we can use the rule. That becomes 2. And then over here, I have to use the chain rule. So it's going to be 2 times a half. I bring that half down. And then I have to times by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be minus 2x. And then I take the 1 minus x squared and lower the power by 1. The 2 and the half cancel. So let me just tidy it up. I'm going to get 2 plus 2x over. I'm going to put back the square root because it, I tend to find it easier to solve equations like this now. And this is going to equal 0 for the stationary points. I've just realized I've made one mistake. I forgot to include that negative. So that would have caused a problem otherwise. 
Therefore, 2 is going to equal 2x over root 1 minus x squared. I can just divide through by 2 to make that 1. And then it's going to be root 1 minus x squared is equal to x. Actually, at this point, you might notice that actually that was y from before, and that was x. So we are going to get the same solution. They're going to be the same thing. But let's just follow it through. Square both sides. So 2x squared is equal to 1, x squared is equal to a half, and x is going to be 1 over root 2. Ignore any negatives. Technically, we should reject them, but I've said right at the start that x is um, positive. And from that, I would get that y is 1 over root 2. And I could then substitute that back into the perimeter, the original perimeter here, and I would again get 2 root 2. So that works really well. The only thing we have to do in addition to this, I mean, that was quite quick, but we have to just prove that it is a maximum, okay, because we're asked to justify that. So that's going to mean we need to return to dp by dx and find the second derivative, d2p by dx squared. When I differentiate 2, I don't get anything. Over here, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. Just going to bring this down. Okay, using the chain rule, I'm going to, right, I've got a minus 2. Um, and then I'm going to differentiate the x first. Well, differentiate the minus 2x. That can be my u and that can be my v. So I'm going to get minus 2 times by 1 minus x squared to the minus a half. And then I'm going to add, it's going to be minus 2x multiplied by minus a half. Bring that down. Using the chain rule, multiply by minus 2x. And then I'm not going through this in lots of detail here. I'm assuming that you've done differentiation before. And then it's going to be 1 minus x squared to the minus 3 over 2. I've lowered the power which gives me minus 2 over root 1 minus x squared. And then there's actually a triple negative here. So this minus a half is going to cancel with that minus 2, but I'm going to be left with minus 2x all over root 1 minus x squared, and this is cubed. And interestingly enough, uh, this is always going to be positive, and this is always going to be positive. Oh, yeah, actually, x is positive. So this is definitely going to be less than 0. Less than 0 for x greater than 0. I could technically substitute in my 1 over root 2, and, you know, technically speaking, that might be expected, but I feel like it's actually enough to just look at the expression and, and just make a ge that general statement, okay? This is clearly always going to be negative. This, if x is positive, is clearly going to be negative. And so the whole thing is negative. And therefore, that, that proves that p is a maximum, for which reasons I'm not going to get into here. Okay, so just an alternative take on it using x. I think using theta might have been a bit easier to differentiate, but a bit harder to form. So good. Good part. Good, uh, good question, this part B. This leaves us with part C, which I'm going to bring down over here. So now instead, a rectangle is placed inside a whole circle of radius 1, such that its vertices all lie on the circumference of the circle. like this. The perimeter of the rectangle is as large as possible. Show that the rectangle must be a square, must be a square, and calculate its perimeter. Well, this seems like a difficult problem, potentially, except it's only two marks, and we've already done quite a lot in part B on a quarter circle. So the first thing to do in this question is think, you know what, I'm going to split this up into a quarter circle. 
and I'm going to call this x, this distance here, and this distance y, because that tallies in well with the 4. And therefore, the perimeter is actually going to be 4x plus 4y. And then x squared plus y squared is going to equal 1, as before. Now, from we can now use our results from before. So from B, maximizing 2x plus 2y, given x squared plus y squared equals 1, gave x equals y equals 1 over root 2. Therefore, maximizing p equals 4x plus 4y, which is just two lots of that, with the same condition, will also give x equals y equals 1 over root 2. The rectangle must be a square. Okay, we did all the work in, in B to show that. Therefore, um, what did it say? Therefore, the perimeter is just going to be two lots of this two root two from before which is going to be 4 root 2. So I think this is enough justification. We've proven it was a, it has to be a square. We did all everything in part B, so we could just kind of tag on to that, get the perimeter, and we're done. So this is another really interesting you know, Olympiad problem, because imagine if we were just given C to start with. Like, that would be a harder problem, obviously. You'd have to realize to... Well, no, I suppose you could do everything. You could just use the method that we used for part B just from the start. Um, but maybe maybe making the maybe making the problem a quarter circle just made it a bit simpler. Um, or maybe it was just a factor of two difference. I haven't quite I haven't quite figured that one out. But anyway, because we did part B, it has helped us do part C really quickly. And we've essentially shown that if you put any and this is a more this is a really nice result if you put any rectangle inside a circle to maximize the perimeter you must make it a square and you know if you know the radius then you can say what the sides of the square should be Great.